Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris. We are currently looking at the Moffith system, which is the last stronghold of the Sandoran Authority. Once we conquer this and take this planet right here, we will have fully occupied all of the systems we intend to claim from the um, from the Sandoran Authority in the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor, and hopefully they should accept a status quo peace. If we look at the war score acceptance, the reason why they are negative 83 is because we are demanding unoccupied systems and planets and the only unoccupied system and planet that we are demanding, I believe, is Moffeth. So once we conquer Moffeth, we should bring that down, bring the war score up by 150. Um, yeah, it just says unoccupied claims Moffeth. So once we get this war acceptance to 150 more, we'll be in the green and we'll be able to achieve our war goals and end this war. Um, and then looking to these rebellions up north, um, we have fully occupied the Union of Holdabana, and we have fully occupied the Blessed Lyrated Concordat um, in terms of conquering their systems. Um, all we have left to do is um, invade their planets with an army. Unfortunately, our army is miles away. Our army is all the way here. Um, ready to invade Moffat. But once we wrap up this war, we can move our army north to help deal with this. I was kind of hoping the state of Panixala would be a little more self-sufficient and deal with this on their own, but it seems like they're they're kind of struggling to occupy any of these planets. Um, we might go and reconquer some of their, their systems that they've claimed here, like Orthana um, and perhaps Loisar. No, actually Loisar is already claimed. Conjublumik is already conquered. I think these are just planets that we have to invade. What about Orthana? Yeah, Orthana is already under control too. So it's all just planets that we have to conquer. So um, we should probably keep we should probably keep our um, our fleet here in the Holdabana system in case their um, their ship their their fleet comes out of missing in action and wants to fight us again. Uh, we'll be ready waiting right here in their home system. Um, other than that, here in the south, I'm gonna leave uh, my fleets in uh, Onab. I'm gonna leave at least one fleet in Onab to defend. Um, we can push into Fanfred when we need. And I'm gonna move one fleet over into the Moffat system to help uh, do some orbital bombardment um, because that was going really slow and the Sandoran Authority kind of dropped the ball and actually let the Sandoran Authority reconquer it. Um, finally, before we unpause, let's go ahead and just check the situation on our planets. Um, looks like we have some available jobs on a lot of our planets, and so the only planet that's really an issue for us is our capital, but these unemployed pops can go ahead and just migrate to other planets. That's could be just fine. Um, I'm noticing we have way more food than we'll ever know what to do with, so I'm going to go ahead and replace some of these agriculture districts with either mining districts or energy districts. Um, and actually, minerals aren't too much of a problem anymore, so I'm just going to go with generator districts because I know our fleet's only going to cost more and more energy as we keep upgrading the size and the complexity of our fleets. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and let's unpause the game. Uh, we just saw a huge battle at Fanfred at the end of the last episode, um, so our fleets desperately need to move back to the Onab uh, Starbase and repair. Um, we have 6.9k um, alloys, so perhaps we should give the reinforce order to the Martano Starfleet. There we go. We can spend those alloys in a good place. We can buy 2,500 more alloys. We can probably get away with selling a bunch of minerals, selling a bunch of food, selling a bunch of consumer goods. Um, and hopefully, after selling all of these, we can buy some more alloys. Okay, and we can go ahead and probably reinforce um, our other fleet as well. That took less casualties, but we'll still wanna reinforce it back up to full strength. So these two fleets are now at full, um, at full power. Um, let's go ahead and take our more powerful fleet and we're gonna leave it here. And we're gonna take a less powerful fleet and we're gonna move it into the Moffat system. We have 13,810 to beat there with our 63,000. I think we're gonna do just fine. Once we defeat their fleet uh, and take their starbase, we're gonna need to bombard their planet for a few months and then we'll move our army in, take Moffat, and hopefully be able to end this war. Our other system, we should keep in the Onab system in case 
The Alliance of Hardshell Harbor wants to come back for another big fight. Looks like they're already amassing another big fleet. I'm almost tempted to just stay in the ONAB system because at least it gives us an extra... I mean, 3.5k is trivial. Yeah, 3.5k is trivial. Though, um, it might help actually to get 18,000 um, into the fan-fed system. So actually, we're going to move our MSI warship out. I know we might have debt collectors coming, but I, tr I fully trust in the strength of our Fevnor starbase to take care of it. Uh, and if it's Hostile not, hopefully we, we shouldn't be too far out. All right, they're fighting us again. 17,000 plus 3,000, so they're fighting us with 20,000. All right, let's do this. They're not going to let us rest, not until this war is over. Incoming so hopefully we can end this war soon. Migration treaty from the state of Mythfell. Um, thanks, but no thanks. Thanks, but no thanks. How are we doing on loyalty? Okay. Um, positive loyalty with the state of Panaxala. The state of Mythfell. We're losing loyalty, but like super slightly. Interesting. And I think the Sandrin Authority, we are losing loyalty with. No, we have positive loyalty with them. So really, it's just the state of Mythfell. Okay. So all we need is just a slightly better relationship with the state of Mythfell, and then we can get our loyalty loyalty back up. All right, what's happening in the fan-fed system? All right, they're failing to... They're failing to bring the fight back to us. Um, they keep spending small fleet after small fleet in, which is actually the best possible thing that they could do. Because picking their fleets off, their really small fleets off, is going to be heavily in our favor. All right, this is commanding one of our star fleets, so we can give... Ooh, okay, let's see. Artillery focus or scout are going to be good. Sublight speed is really good because that gives us more mobility. Um, but this just makes our fleets more powerful. I'm going to go for the sublight speed. Um, making these fleets just a lot more quick to move around um, is just can only be a good thing. Let's go ahead and quickly repair in the ONAB system. We're at 86% um, armor and 97% hull. Um, and here in this, um, in the Moffat system, we're taking on the last of the Sandoran Authority's fleet. Hopefully wiping them out for good this time. And I believe the Moffat system has one planet. Do they have another? For some reason, when we fought this war the first time, we didn't conquer, the, conquer this system. We created a little bit of border gore, so I just want to make sure there's only one planet in here. Okay, I only see one planet. All right, we have taken their starbase. So we need to move this fleet over their planet. And start bombarding. Okay. And here we go. Their defense Both armies are 1,077. We could probably take them right now, but I don't want to take those casualties, so we're going to wait. Okay. This fleet is fully repaired, so let's move back into the fan fed system. Spaceborne life form encountered. Spaceborne life form encountered? Really? At this point in the game? We're meeting new aliens? All right. So we can move our army to orbit this planet. We're not going to give them the land army's order just yet. We want to bring down their garrison probably to 700 or 600, I would say, before I'm comfortable moving in. Spaceborne life form encountered. All right, look at all these big fleets here. Actually, they're not a bunch of big fleets. They're a bunch of small fleets. I think we can take all of them combined. Okay, um, here are our reinforcements to our army. We have um, two. Is that all we were trying to build? I think so. I think we lost a Titanic Beast, and I'm wondering why we can't... It's not letting me click to build our third Titanic Beast again. Was three all we were going to get for the whole game? And by letting one die, like we can never get it back? Perhaps. We can increase our trade value or clear blocker. Clear blocker, that's the lane. Um, Alright, the Yarrow Reachers display psionic potential. Welcome. This is the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor? 
is there um yeah that's their that's their main population interesting they've gone psionic perhaps we can form a good What's relationship with them after this war i kind of didn't want to form a good relationship with them because they messed up our last war when when we were trying to liberate the sander and authority they kind of just blatantly used aggression to conquer more planets Space for their own empire attack. we took that as a uh, well, that was kind of an insult in, in our eyes. So we, we've kind of avoided allying with them. But now we've kind of corrected their wrong when we finish this um, war. And after correcting their wrong, perhaps we could be friends. All right. Looks like the state of Mythfell and the state of Panaxala have done an okay job of um, conquering their planets back. Yeah. Hopefully they'll also be able to uh, annex Spaceport hold all right how are we doing in the Moffeth system garrison is down to 740 we will land our armies Spaceport soon under attack. just want to check uh, the fan fred system we're doing okay yeah let's go ahead and uh, let's land our armies do we want to wait for our extra two Transport armies? Sure. They can join us. They can uh, join up with their buddies. Spaceport under attack. And we can give them the merge fleet order. Research complete. That's going to bring us back up to 20 psionic um, armies. All right, let's go ahead and land our armies. We can choose a new research. We got a T-slot weapon. I don't know where we're going to be able to put that on. But immediately of all these options, I really like the fleet command limit. Bigger and better fleets. Spaceport Always better. Attack. Always a good thing. Okay. Taking this planet was trivial. I don't know if we're going to have taken any casualties. Spaceport under attack. All right. We conquered them. Lucrative adventures. A large contingent of our veterans have sent a letter of requesting leave to travel to a colony at Panaxala Prima, the capital of our vassal state, Panaxala. Included with the letter is a gift of credits to grease the wheels of bureaucracy. Wow, is that a bribe? It seems like there are quite a lot of stories among our soldiers about the lucrative adventures one can find in those systems, be it as a mercenary or pirate. I mean, that makes sense with their civil war ongoing. In either case, it is made clear that they have put together what credits they have, hoping to make many times that if they are sent off to Panax Alla Prima. All right. Yeah, uh, if we were to formally send them to Panic Sala Prima, they are at least more likely to be a boon to the leadership there and more likely to respect the laws and rules of our vassal um, than if we were to let them run free. Okay. Give them formal leave. Maybe I should have forbade it. Okay. Did we fully occupy the system? System is fully occupied by the Sandrine United Planet States. So we should be able to end this war. Yep, we have no penalty for demanding unoccupied systems. Ablapus. Where the heck is the Ablapus system? Gonna be honest, I don't know. Is it something maybe the state of Panaxala is claiming? Ah, it is. In fact, it's just this system right here, and I don't think that's super necessary. Let's just go ahead and end the war before they manage to take trireme yeah they're gonna take trireme in a second anyways so i'd rather just end the war in case they have a claim on the system i don't want them to end up taking it okay so we're gonna achieve our war goals that'll end this war we can move our army up north to help deal with these civil wars i think we're gonna move it into fear mathros um and then we can move pull our fleet back we can pull them back to Reganoff for the time being Maybe we can pull one back to Huawei, and we can probably pull our recovered asset back into Fevnor to defend against the debt collectors. All right. Any day now? One of our wars should be completed. The best possible outcome, the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor has signed peace with us, and... Best of all, the Sandrine Authority is no more. We can grant away these systems that we claimed to the Sandrine United Planet States, which we're hoping to grow into a more powerful and capable vassal. 
So let's go ahead and offer trade deal and let's offer systems. We just want to make sure not to offer them the Waltham system. Every other system is good to go. All right. Oh, I remember. I can't um, trade any systems while I'm at war. So I'm going to have to finish these civil wars first. All right. Let's try to finish this quickly. Um, in fact, I could probably be doing some orbital bombardment. I wanted to avoid this because I didn't want to destroy too many of the um, pop pops on this world for the state of Panic Solid. But honestly, these wars are just dragging on. So we got to do what we got to do. Good relations. Though we had our reservations about sending adventure-seeking veterans to Panic Solid Prima, we have received reports that our vassal, from our vassal that they have found themselves at home there and were proven to be more helpful than one would originally expect. Well, hopefully they're helping them sort out these civil wars. All right. Governing ethics shift in the Sandarin United Planet states. They have become more outwardly xenophobic. Why are all of our vassals becoming fanatic xenophobics? I really don't like that. That's not good for us. That means that they're going to have like an opinion malice towards us. In fact, I think it's almost time that we stop being so xenophobic and we go into our government screen, go to our factions, and maybe adopt a different faction so we could reduce our xenophobic tendencies. Well, okay, I was gonna say maybe we suppress one of the factions, but I actually don't think that's very egalitarian to suppress a faction to begin with. I think we just kind of have to let the citizens do what they want. And the fact of the matter is, if most of our citizens are xenophobic, then that's how democracy works. That's what they're going to vote for. It's not our place to um, interfere. Okay, we're going to research the last of this debris, hopefully um, accelerating our technological growth. Okay, how's bombarding the... Hold the Bana system going. Their garrison is only 117, so. Hello. State of Panic Solid, do you have an army anywhere? That army can take it. Why, why is your transport fleet doing nothing? Transport Special fleet 13, complete. what are you doing? The AI in this game is not always the best. Okay. Well, here our transport fleet goes. It's riding the hyperlanes, so hopefully it'll move over there quickly enough. We need to end these civil wars so that I can grant away these planets because if I go to Empire Species, I just want to make sure that we have all of these species sent to set rights. Migration controls enabled. Migration controls enabled. Migration controls enabled. These are all pops that are on these newly conquered planets that I don't want migrating into our own empire. Seeing as our citizens are still very xenophobic. Okay. Migration controls enabled. Okay, everything should be fine. Leader level up. This is governing Korim. We can give a bonus to specialist pop resource output. That's going to be good. Corm is like an industrial world, correct? It is. It's a forge world. All those forge specialists. Um, we might consider starting to upgrade some buildings. We have a bunch of rare resources. Volatile modes plus 31, exotic acids plus 17, and rare crystals plus 13. We might consider just starting to upgrade some of these buildings on our planets. Um, for example, these researcher buildings, if I upgrade them, I can just increase the amount of bureaucrat jobs on Favaria, which wouldn't be a bad shout. Wouldn't be a bad shout at all. We have 17 housing and no jobs, so why don't we upgrade a couple of these? Or, since this is not a research-focused world, why don't I... I was going to say maybe we upgrade our administrative offices, but I actually don't need the Unity that much anymore. We're not using Unity for much. I'm happy with our current uni unity income. In fact, 
We should look at planetary ascension. We should keep uh, spending this unity. Uh, our next one's going to cost us 49,000. I think we keep doing our planetary ascension on our generator world, which is at level 3. 49,000 to level 4. Sure. And uh, we also want it on our forge world. Corium. Ascension tier 2. This is going to increase our med metallurgist uh, output. Actually, it's decreasing their upkeep. Wait. That's not very good. I want to increase their output, not decrease their upkeep. Their, their upkeep is just minerals. So I guess we just rather have the mining world. Um, and keep doing the generator world. Actually, look. I've gotten down to 45 unity. 45k unity. End of the union of Holdabana. Alright, fantastic. These civil wars are wrapping up. Why did we... We don't have claims on these systems, do we? Why do we have claims on these systems? This should have been given back to the Favarian Republic. We have no business owning these systems. We'll grant them back when we get the chance. Okay, I guess Fear Mathios is the last, um, is the last piece of the war, the last piece of the puzzle to end. We can move this uh, Starfleet into the Yamathur system. Actually, I kind of would rather have them on the out, on the border or outpost or whatnot. Um, I believe this is our new shipyard on the on the border, Corolla. Looks like we need to build a target uplink computer, a communications jammer, and a disruption field generator. And we can start upgrading citis, uh, citadels. Um, before we upgrade to citadels, I want to spend our alloys on creating a new fleet, though. I think four fleets is, is a good place for us to be in right now. The crisis is coming in 15 years, less than 15 years, I should say. Council agenda ready. All right, where is our army? Have they arrived? They have arrived. They're just sitting here. Let's go ahead and do something about it. Golden flower, land armies. The defense army is at 466. That's nothing. Nothing compared to us. Planetary invasion Alright, we can go ahead and launch a new agenda. Let's go ahead and take a bonus to... Starbase upgrade cost actually would not be bad right now, because guess what we're about to do? Hmm. We don't need pop growth speed. Resources from psionic pops and research speed. I think the resources from psionic pops plus 5% is actually hard to beat because all of our pops are psionic. All right, are we taking golden flower? What's going on with this invasion? Enemy planet secured. All right, looks like we took two casualties there. Wow, but worth it. We can end the civil war now. No, we can't. Do they have another planet in the system? Oh, they also have future. With another 466. All right. Well, let's move our armies in to future. Um, there we go. And we'll end the civil war. We can grant away all these systems and finally be done with this warring. I don't think we're going to declare any wars from here on out until the end game crisis. We're just going to be getting ready. We might even get a chance to open the L-Gates, which might be a war of its own to deal with. At this point, I don't even know if that's going to be a distraction. Like, should we even open the L-Gates? There are some potentially very dangerous things coming out of them um, that might be spreading us thin as we're about to face the endgame crisis. We could take a bonus to our army damage. Yeah, let's do it. All right, here we go. Debris analyzed. We're facing the last planet of the Rebellion, and the Rebellion should be completely done. Fantastic. Let's move our army back into Fevnor. Um, looks like we're at 17, so we want to build two more psionic armies from Valdar. End of the Blessed Lyrton Concordat. Okay, we are no longer at war, so let's go to all our vassals. Let's go to offer trade deal, and let's transfer system. We don't want to transfer Waltham, but everything else is good to go. So Sandra and Authority, congratulations, it's your lucky day. Okay, they can also take Uriel. Okay.
Okay, and then we can go ahead and go to the state of Panixala and we can offer them Viriac, Brias, Holdabana, and Mirce. And I think that's everything. No, we also need to offer them all of these systems. Okay, this is going to be a little while. Okay, so state of Panixala, let's open our, diplom our diplomacy screen. Let's get a commercial pact. Let's get a research agreement. Let's offer a trade deal. Um, okay, so we want to offer them Mirce. We want to offer them Holdabana. We want to offer them Viriac. We want to offer them Brius. Okay, that should be these systems up here dealt with. We do not want to offer them the Singularity system. We do want to offer them Zandabon, um, Xeris, Firmathrios, and Chiselion. But we want to keep Sasara. Where's Sasara? And Unimar. And we want to keep um, Corolla, Zorakan, Black Hole, and Durellis. Okay, confirm. Okay, fantastic. State of Panixala, let's offer another trade deal. Let's go ahead and transfer systems. We want to give you Fear Mathrios. We want to keep Sasara Unimar. Xeris will give you as well. And I think that's everything. Fantastic. All right. Our borders are back to what they should be, and the Sandrine United Planet States is now huge. Research complete. Okay, now the Sandrine United Planet States should be able to expand down here, but it looks like they're being stopped by a bunch of mining drones. So, if we have a fully repaired fleet and a um, fully reinforced fleet, soon to be fully reinforced at least, let's go ahead and move our fleet down, and let's just start taking out all these mining drones. So, they can go ahead and expand to the southern reaches of the Empire. Yep. Analyzed. All right, fantastic. We have researched Devastator Torpedoes. We can get Orbitals, or we can get an Elgate Insight. Let's get an Elgate Insight. Orbitals are tempting. I actually, at this point, now that I'm not at war, I actually think that might be worth investing some resources in to figure out how that works. But unfortunately, uh, I'd just rather take the Elgate Insight. Where are we at up to our Elgate Insights? Situation long. Five of seven. Okay, so that'll take us up to six of seven. So once we finish our cooldown in Discoveries. Okay, once we finish our cooldown, which is not yet, five more years, we should be at seven of seven. Fantastic. We'll be able to open the L gates and see where they lead to. No spoilers. I guess I've already kind of spoiled it. I said dangerous things can come out of the, the portals. But that's all I'll say. Okay. We're moving our army back. Fantastic. Let's make sure all of our stations are fully out outfitted. Ready to go for endgame crises. Okay, fantastic. We have 16 of 15 star bases, Research so we're complete. right at our capacity, so I'm happy with where we're at there. Yep, research complete. We unlocked an energy siphon. I was gonna say, I didn't think we were researching that. That just came solely off the back of debris. Sure, that's fine. Researching debris is good like that. All right, how about this fleet? Can we go ahead and reinforce it? Where is our third fleet? This fleet. Fully reinforced. This fleet. Fully reinforced. This fleet. Fully reinforced. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and start building a new fleet. And we're actually doing just fine on minor artifacts. So let's go into our ship designer. And um, I don't want to push it, but we could probably include a couple more Archaeotech weapons on our ships if we want. Um, what are these driller drones and are they better than advanced strike craft? What is the average damage output for advanced strike craft? 40 driller drones is less But they're different, right? Yeah, these go th straight through shield 
and they do bonus damage to armor. These do not go through shields. They actually have a penalty to shield damage, but they go straight through armor and they have a bonus to hull. I actually think I'm fine keeping the advanced st StarCraft. It seems like we'd have to kind of build our whole fleet design around this to make it work, and I, I don't really want to do that. Um, we have um, our battleships are probably still the best they can be. Yep. I don't think we need to change anything there. I don't think we have any Archaea Tech weapons that we really want to use. Kinetic. I'm wondering, actually, if railguns are going to be better than these macro batteries. Level 3? No, probably not. Average damage, 19.05. Average damage, 16.58. But that's without our, like, almost 50% bonus. So, yeah, these are still going to be de dealing more damage. Um, cruisers. We could probably put cavitation collapses on our cruisers instead of regular lasers. What's the bonus of these again? So the regular lasers... Shield damage, armor damage, hull damage. 50, 50, 25. 50, 50, 50. So these just deal... Oh no, these don't even have a bonus to hull damage. These just do armor penetration. I actually think that's pretty good. We already get the bonus hull damage from the plasma cannons. So... Um, let's go ahead and update our cruiser. Oh, a ship of this design is currently being built. I guess we gotta wait a little while. Um, I don't want to put any Archaeotech weapons on our destroyers or corvettes because they are really fragile and they get destroyed all the time and we will, um, be constantly needing to replenish them and we will run out of our minor artifacts if we use Archaeotech weapons on our destroyers and, and, uh, corvettes. Um, okay, we can upgrade our scientist who's governing Fortalia. We can give bonus amenities. Sure. How's our fleet doing? Okay, it'll be down there in no time. We'll clear out all this ancient mining drone business. All right, we unlocked x-ray lasers. Fantastic, we can get a bonus to our research station output. At this point, I don't know how useful that's gonna be. We can get proton launchers. This is a new kind of torpedo that does, oh, it's like an energy weapon version of torpedoes that's interesting we might look into that um so many things i kind of want to get research institutes i want to keep upping our science output oh we still have four months left to um research disruptors first all right well fantastic if we look at the borders i mean we control like a significant chunk of the galaxy. I'd say that's probably about an eighth of the galaxy right there, all under our control. We've got to be one of the most powerful in the galaxy. Space Storm Vitorax arrives. Massive subspace disturbances have erupted in systems across the galaxy. Early reports indicate that nearly 50% of planets in the galaxy have been affected by this unprecedented phenomenon, which appears to be a byproduct of thousands of years of heavy hyperspace travel by civilizations both past and present. Scientists are confident that this galactic space storm will dissipate itself within a period of 5 to 10 years. Until that happens, the storm will play havoc with sublight engines, shield generators, and sensor systems in those star systems affected by it. The galactic community has officially named the storm Vitorax and issued a general travel advisory. What did this do? Do we have any systems affected by Vitorax? Is this it? Environmental effects. Sublight speed reduction 50%, shield nullification 100%. Mm. Oh, it is. Okay. That is a um that is a pretty significant debuff. Do I really want to be fighting mining drones with these debuffs? I mean, how powerful can the mining drones be? 4K? No, I don't even think it really matters. With, Construction complete. With numbers that low, it really doesn't matter. Um, let's go ahead and go to our fleet management. Um, we're at 190 fleet command limit on all three. Why don't we go ahead and just... Can I... Is there an option to, like, just create a new version of this ship template? Uh, 
um, create new. Can I copy this template and paste it? Copy. Oh, there it is. All right, so we have a new fleet and um, we're gonna avoid reinforcing it so that we can change our cruisers to use our Kaotech weapons. Research complete. All right, and we got upgraded disruptors. That's pretty good. We could get X slot weapons. Or we can get bonus um, bonus research speed. Or I can get tachyon sensors. This increases our tracking. I mean, that's like pretty good. But that research option is always going to be available to us. I mean, we have to take arc emitters, right? For those of you who aren't super familiar with Solaris, X slot weapons are like super big, big boy weapons. You put them on your battleships. I think I've only done one playthrough before where I played long enough to get access to those weapons, but they're pretty cool. They deal huge amount of damage, but they're only good against large targets because they're really inflexible. You can't really like sit and aim them very far or anything like that. All right. We're at 122 population. No, that's 102 new bowls and 375 Valdars. We're at 497 population. It's pretty, we're doing pretty well for ourselves. All right. Once we start clearing out all these mining drones, hopefully the Sandrine United Planet States will be able to send construction ships and claim all of these systems. All right, actually all of our fleets are fully upgraded. Incoming transmission, deck collectors, we won't pay. Bring it on. Under attack. They're coming at us with 8,000. Are you kidding me? That is ridiculous. Okay, ship designer, let's go ahead and upgrade our cruisers to use our Kaotech weapons. So instead of these antimatter missiles, let's upgrade them with nanoclad launchers. Yes. Um, and our gunship, let's use ancient cavitation collapsers. We have all these, um, we have all these minor artifacts. We should be using them. If it becomes a problem, we will cross that bridge when we come to it. If we run out of minor artifacts, but we have plus 12 every month. We're like always sitting at the full cap. We still have 4.7 K. Um, and then finally, have all our ships upgraded. So for example, our Corvettes should be using, yeah, phase disruptors, that's good. And they're using advanced combat computers now. All right, I think it's time where we can go ahead. Um, and for those fleets that are just sitting there, let's give them the upgrade order first. Before we start building our new fleet, let's just see about upgrading our existing fleets. Okay. Uh, that didn't cost us too many alloys. Not today, deck collectors are dealt with. I think there's another class of ship too, Titans, that we can research eventually. Those might be fun to play with. I don't think I've ever built a Titan before. I also think we can research mega structures and build some mega structures in our systems. Never done that before either. So we have a lot still to discover in this game, even though it seems like we're coming up to the end game crisis. I don't know how long the crisis is. I don't know if it's something we can deal with in 20 years or if it's something that we'll be dealing with for 150 and how much of the game we still have yet to play. All right, we're full up on influence. What is this situation log in Dandar? Even the score. Remnant of a remnant. Our investigations suggest that the remnants of a civilization dedicated to the accumulation of knowledge sought their refuge in the Dandar system. All right. Well, once the Sander and United Planet States explores out that far, we can probably send a construction ship down and try to claim that system with our 1,000 influence. Ships upgraded. Yeah. So let's just move a construction ship down there in the time being. We can spend all our influence doing that. 
State of Panic Sala has reached level two in the Scholarium specialization. What does that mean for us? Um, negotiate agreement, level two bonuses. Monthly scientific research plus 30% for them. Research points in caches plus 1,000. Scholarium traits. Scholarium investigator. Research speed plus 10%. Survey speed plus 20%. Anomaly research speed plus 25%. Okay. Scientist capacity and starting skill level for them. Wow, that's all really good. Scientists with the Scholarium trait can be traded with the Overlord. Okay, we can um, we can gain access to their scientists if we want. I don't think we're going to need to do that, but it's good to know we could do it if we need. Our Commissary General can get an upgrade. Trade value? Sure. That just translates into energy credits. Trade value in this game, I feel like, is something that could be a lot deeper and more well fleshed out. Because right now, all trade value is is just another source of energy credits. Emergency measure, Astral Studies Network. By linking our star bases together into a massive sensor mesh, we can greatly improve the quality of data that we gather, enhances the effectiveness of the solar panel network, black hole observatory, and listening post star base modules. Uh, I don't like the idea of linking up our network of star bases with everyone else's. That is a privilege we only want to allow to our close allies, AKA our states in the Republic. Empires that are in breach of galactic law must permit regular inspections of their research facilities. No. I don't want to do any kind of sanctions. Relocate the galactic market? Yeah, we don't really care about that. We'll abstain. Repeal administrative sanctions? Yeah, let's support any kind of repealing things. We don't like regulation. We want to do our own thing. We don't want anyone telling us what to do. All right, we're clearing out all these mining drones. All right, looks like we have researched all these debris. So let's actually start surveying Hostile some systems. Let's see if we can... Let's actually just survey the Charna system and then survey the Dandar system so that we can claim them. Whatever this is, I want to figure out what this special project is. We finally have access to it. We've conquered our way all the way down here. How is Minimar Specialized Industries doing? Are they... They're at war, it looks like? No, they're not. But they do have a lot of rivals, and they are tiny. Hopefully, they'll be wiped out by someone soon. All right. And this is probably a decent place to end the episode. We have completed the war. We have restored borders of State of Panixala. And we have expanded the borders of the Sander and United Planet States. Our empire is in a golden age, right? The economy is booming. Scientific, we're in a scientific renaissance. We're learning from all this battle debris. We're kind of picking up all these different pieces of technology from the other empires we were just fighting. Um, seems like our vassal states are happy with us. They're loyal and, and happy with us. So yeah, everything is going really well. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next episode. 10 more years. The next episode, we're just going to be building out our fourth fleet. Maybe um, surveying some of these systems down here and figuring out what's what. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.